hey what's up guys welcome to my channel and today in this video we are going to look at a few more interesting things that we can do with our form using the functionalities that are available with livewire 3 so so far we have already created this customer create form but obviously nothing is complete until we have an update form as well and to demonstrate how we can use certain features of livewire which are related to real time i think it makes sense for us to have that update form in place at first so let's get started and create our update form the first thing that i will do is go to my routes file web.php and there i will create the view route and in here i will do a route model binding so i am loading a customer over here and i'm going to use the same form that i am going that right now i'm using for the creation of a customer so as you can see both are using the same live wire component right and if i now save go over here i need to see what all customers i have let me see one gives me what it has nothing two gives me nothing let me know open up the database so here's my customers table and I have a few things over here. Obviously, I was expecting it to show something which is um, obviously not going to happen. But at least the routes are opening up. It is not giving me a 404. So let's see what we can do so that when I go to slash one, it shows me this particular customer with ID one, ID two, three, four, so on and so forth. Okay. Obviously, whatever we need to do will be inside the customer ad. So let's pull it up. And the first thing that I'm going to do is we need to load the customer first in some way. And the best way to do that is using the mount function. So if you haven't seen the previous videos, mount function is one hook available with Livewire, which allows us to run some code just before the component is kind of you know getting into the um, rendering phase okay what i will do is i will inject the customer which is available through the route model binding and if the customer id is kind of available to us then we know that it's a route model binding and you know we are looking at this route and not the create route because in that case the customer doesn't exist and we will not get that and if we get the customer what i will do is this form set customer and i'll pass this customer this is a function which i haven't written yet but the idea is that if i see that it's the page is loading to show a customer i will quickly call this set customer function so that all these properties are sorry all these properties are set based on what i got so let's see what we can do with that so i'm expecting a customer object over here and very simply i will add the values of all the attributes so i have six let me do that right so i have assigned all of the properties over here if the customer set function is called and ideally i should also have one more property which is the id which by default will be zero and i'm thinking why don't i make it a logged property as well so that it doesn't change from the front end right and i'll also do this id equals customer id with this in place ideally if i now refresh my page can you see i'm able to see the customer details because with the route model binding now it is able to on the mount function understand that there is a customer id because you know this is set right and it is calling this function route model binding is allowing me to get the dollar customer variable we are sending it to our this set customer method over here and it is doing its job 
So far, so good. Now, how do we update? Because right now, our form can do a save, which is basically a create call to the create function of that model. But we do need to update as well. And I want the button to be same. I don't want an update and a um, save functions. So what I can do is that's where the ID will come into picture, which is if this ID equals zero, then we know that it's a customer create. So we run that else. I'll run an update method on this class, which I haven't def defined yet, but I will do that. Okay, but that's the logic. It's a private method. I don't need to uh, call this from outside you know, because the basic idea is that anyone who needs to save the customer, they will just call the save function. But internally, I will decide whether it is the update function or it's a create one. Okay. Now, in this, on update, I have all these properties. So what I can do is get that information. I'll get that in a variable called this all right. So dollar data. Okay. But in dollar data, I will also get the ID, which I don't want because I don't want to set the ID. So I'll just do an unset dollar data ID. And then very easily I can run customer where id is this id i can't do a dollar id right now because i have done an unset and then i sent dollar data to the update function because i now have all the attributes which are set over here so anything which has changed will automatically be reflected because my view is binded to those attributes. So why don't we just try and see doing that? Okay. I will maybe use the third customer and say new customer updated, something like that. I hit submit. Nothing happened over here. I need to show some message, but if I refresh, can you see the new customer became new customer updated? And the created at and the updated at are two different fields because this is 24th of August and this is 27th of August, right? So the dates are changing. We have updates. And if I refresh, you can see this is updated. If I go to one, this is fine. I can change this to Amitav Roy as well. Hit save, refresh, and the database shows me all these things. So yeah, that's how it is, you know, that's how easy it is to, you know, have your same form being used both for creation and deletion. It helps you, you know, create that reusable code kind of thing. And yeah, I mean, with that one basic, you know, uh, logic, I'm able to do the update versus create, right? Livewire also allows you to do certain interesting things. For example, when you are saving the form, if you want to have some loading indicator or stuff like that, you can do that. I'll show you how. So let's just say what we will do is when a create or an update is happening, before that we will add a small delay by adding sleep of three seconds. Okay. And with that, what we can do is go to our button. I'll open up the blade file which we have and in this submit button because it needs a markup i will change it a bit i'll make it a button with type submit okay and class btn success okay and i'll get rid of this right save and then the magic comes in so I have a special attribute called wire loading. And if this is the case, let's say we add this three dots. Now what happens is then when I try to update, can you see it gives that thing over here? One, two, three, and it updated. 
So basically, if I do 111, hit save. And now, can you see it got updated? And at that point, you can even want to you know, disable the uh, form button or stuff like that. You can do that. It's a loading indicator which will allow you to get that event and do stuff. So you can even play SVG animations over here. And this is quite interesting. I, I thought you know, it's very um, you know, nice uh, UX so that the user is able to you know, get some quick feedback. Now, the next thing is how we can add live validations. For example, let's say we have this name, okay? And if I go over here, the name's minimum length is three. So if you want for some reason any live validation in place, then what you can do is just add an attribute called live, hit refresh, and now can you see it immediately? start saying that the name field is required and the moment i have added this it says it should be at least three characters right so these are some of the benefits of having that live thing you know, you, you will immediately get some uh, feedback uh, if the user is not filling up the form properly or stuff like that now one more important thing is if you have let's say some desktop application you know you use it with the idea that whatever changes you are making, the user doesn't need to click on the save button. If that is the case, right? There's one more thing which we can do, and it's a very interesting one, which is Livewire gives us the ability, or it has one more hook called updated. Like we have mount, we have updated. It gives us two values, name and the value. So why don't we do a dd of name and value to first understand what we are getting and for this what i will also do is maybe do a blur because the blur will mean that it will fire that change the moment i get out of that input field so i'll hit refresh and let's just do this oops nothing happened Mm, right updated will only get fired when there is some change previously what happened is if i remove this additional space and hit tab it doesn't do anything because it understands that it's not dirty whereas if i hit save uh, sorry space and now if i'm changing can you see it shows me form dot name which is dollar name if you remember correct and next one is value so how do we tap into this hmm. let me think so i can do a simple thing public customer dollar customer and because i have done this route model binding if you have followed my previous videos you know this mount function will automatically attribute this so what will happen is if i do a dump of customer to array i'll just show you that it works um, sorry this customer not dollar customer okay hit refresh make a space i get the entire model so that's promising because now what i can do is simply write a little bit of code in here which is dollar name equals sorry if you see the uh, what was happening is oh i think now i will not get that space blur thingy hold on i'll just yeah i'll show you uh, so that you understand what i'm talking about uh, why is it not getting saved right if you see the name is form dot name whereas in my model it has to be name right so what i'm gonna do is name equals explode on the full stop and that's about it i'll take the first key because i know this is going to be the case and it is not um, being dictated by the front end right now so i can easily do this 
so this customer update dollar name dollar value and with this done if i refresh my page and the database i'll show you if i change one two three and blur out come to the database can you see it changed let's just change this one because john doe has been lying there for quite some time so if i go to two make it john d i hit tab so that the blur function was called and i can see it got changed so you see this is the beauty and it is not just name i can even change this one ah but i i'm not sure let me see the blur yes the blur needs to be added so maybe what i will do is pa, 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 dot blur and let's try now okay so I have and this one blurred. Right, this got added. Right, and I can get this back. All right, so this is some of the interesting things that I saw with LiveWire 3, the things which you can do with forms. I hope you like this video and the features which I have explained. If you have any questions, feel free to discuss that with me on the discord link below if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel